All right, friends, thanks for coming back to the channel for video number four of our Blazor WebAssembly web development application from the very, very beginning to TBD. Actually, I'm not really sure where this application is going, to be honest. We're going to figure it out as we go along. I don't even know if I'm going to get to an end point, but I like to think of developers as artists, and artists' work is never actually finished. It's only abandoned. Uh, so anyways, with that being said, today we're going to jump into creating or beginning to create our API. So we are still in the API section of our solution, so we can ignore the front end for right now. We'll get to that a little bit later. But in the API section, last time we started creating entities, we made a folder called entities, and each one of those entities is basically something that our uh, application is going to be handling. It's going to be throwing these around and connecting them together, and it's essentially going to return them to the user at, at some point in the near future when we get the front end up and running. But here's the thing. We can't just have entities hanging out every time we run the program and being rebuilt every time we run the program because we want to have persistence too. And persistence comes from databases. And we need to have a database in order to have these entities stored in something. So for instance, if I store a piece of furniture as a couch with an ID of four and a room ID of one for living room, I want to be able to store that in a database so that I can access it later on when the program is launched again after it's been closed down. If I don't have a place for that, to be stored, well, then I've got to add that entity or I've got to add that object every time I start the application. And that is super inconvenient. So I'm going to close these down here. And what I want to do is come over to my solution explorer. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder here oops, in our API. And here we go, add and folder. And we're going to call this data, right? And our data class or our data folder is going to contain something called a data context class. So I'm going to add a new C sharp class and I'm just going to call it DB context. And that's basically it. Real simple. Okay. And so the DB context class is actually going to be for our database and the database context DB context class is actually going to inherit from something called DB context from, as you can see right here, Microsoft.entity framework core. All right. And so what that's going to do is it's going to essentially bring in the ability to talk to a database. All right. Now there's a couple things that we need to do is first of all, we've got it inheriting from DB context. Okay. Uh, it's not always the best practice, I guess, to call it DB context like this, but it's not really a big deal here right now. Uh, my suggestion honestly is when you decide what your application is going to be about, like for instance, if this is actually going to be about, as we mentioned, furniture and rooms, we might say like, furniture context or house context or something along those lines, like appropriately naming it. But in this case, we'll just call it DB context. That's totally cool, not a big deal, because as you can see right here, the Microsoft.entity framework core.db context was brought in here to let us know that this DB context is where we're inheriting from, and this DB context is what we're actually using. So hopefully that won't come into play later on, but we'll change it if we have to. Uh, so anyways, so now that I've got the DB context going on here, what I need to do is actually make a constructor for this. So I'm going to type in C-T-O-R and hit tab, and that's going to create a constructor for DB context. All right. And then with that DB context constructor, what I want to do is make sure that I am bringing in an appropriate parameter. So I need to bring in a parameter of DB context, and that's going to be options. And then, of course, this is going to be named DB context. Actually, you know what? Hold on a second. Let me redo this. I don't like the way that this is all working out. I'm going to say don't save. And I'm going to delete this. And you can go ahead and do, do the same thing. Delete it. Not a big deal. I'm going to redo this. I'm going to actually call it something so that's not so confusing because that's, I'm just realizing how silly it is that it's called it DB context. So this time I'm actually going to call it home furnishings context. There we go. It's kind of a long name, but it'll work. And now I'm going to do the same things that I did before. I'm going to inherit from the DB context. There we go. And you'll notice now, instead of being down here, the using statement is actually up here. And that's because this DB context understands that this is what I'm inheriting from, and this is the name of it. And that's actually going to make a lot more sense for us as we build this constructor. So anyways, as I mentioned before, we're going to say C2OR or CTOR, get a constructor. And then in this constructor, we're going to bring in a parameter of DB, oops, DB context options. And that's going to be a home furnishing context. So that's the name of our context class. And then we're going to type in options and then finish off those parentheses, colon, 
and then we're going to say base, and then in here we'll also put options. There we go. And now our DB context has a constructor. All right. Now, we'll come back to this in a little bit, okay? This is actually where we're going to be putting our DB sets, or as we call them, database sets. That's where our database is going to be uh, accessing, essentially, all of the things that are, or sorry, our server, our API, is going to access the database through the DB context. And so the whole purpose of this con DB context, or the home furnishings context class inheriting from DB context, is that we'll have different things set in here in this database context class that allow us access to the database and all of the database calls are going to pass through here so anytime I want to make a database call what I'm going to need to do is inject my DB context class into whatever class is going to be making those database calls now in order to make those database call, or sorry in order to inject the DB context to make those database calls what I need to do is go back to the API and go down to the program.cs for the API, all right? And I've got to add a couple things in here. So in the program.cs, here we go. We've got builder.services, add controllers, got add endpoints, add swagger. As I mentioned before, swagger is how we're able to access the back end of the API when we run this. Uh, adding the controllers is going to add the various controllers that we have within our API when we build those. But we actually don't have a database context class in here yet and we need to have that in here as well so that we can inject it so in here we're going to say builder dot services dot add db context there it is and then we're going to name the of the db context which in this case is home furnishings context there we go okay and then we're going to pass in say options and then we're going to do a callback function here and that callback function is going to look like this it's going to say options dot use and in this case what we want to do is make sure that we are using sql server so as we mentioned before we are uh going to use uh, microsoft sql server in order to access or build a database and then access that database and like the you know the database will be controlled by microsoft sql server and so we want to let the program know that we're going to be using SQL Server for this. So we're going to just type in SQL. There we go. And it should be coming in if you import it correctly, Microsoft.entity framework core. So you should be seeing use SQL Server. And then of course in here we're going to say builder dot configuration. And those should populate for you. And then get connection string. These are all part of this whole library that we've already imported. And then finally in here we're going to write default connection all right and that's going to fill that out and then end that off with a semicolon so you shouldn't see any errors here because the only thing that we really actually had to import was this use sql server and it comes from microsoft.entity framework core all right everything else though is pretty standard stuff and of course this right here is going to be the name of your db context which we put right here in the name all right so pretty easy right there now the last thing we got to do of course is this default connection because right now the default connection doesn't actually exist what we need to do is make sure that it does exist and most importantly that it's set to use Microsoft SQL Server because there are a variety of different ways that different databases can be connected to like if you're using a MySQL it's going to have a different type of connection string if you're using say SQL Lite, which is another option that's going to use a different kind of connection string so we need to make sure that we're using the right connection string for Microsoft SQL Server so back in my solution explorer I'm going to come over here to the app settings.json file now and open that up and you notice I've got all this stuff up here I'm going to go to the very very top and I'm going to add in some new lines here. I'm going to first start saying in parentheses connection strings. There we go. And then I'm going to say, oops, don't want to get rid of those. And then I'm going to say default connection. And what's interesting here is that this line here, default connection, is literally going to be accessed via here. So if you were to change this name to anything else, you would have to make sure that in here it is also that same thing. But you could essentially change it to anything else if you want to. Just I wouldn't recommend it because this is pretty standard stuff. If another developer comes and looks at your program, they're going to want to know what the default connection is. This is the best way to do it. If you put in here something, whoops, if you put in here something random, so just a random string of characters, they're not going to know what the heck you're talking about. So it's best to just stick to the norms when it comes to this type of stuff, the uh, uh, the already established norms. 
Uh, and so in this case now, I've got my default connection tag here, and I just want to write in what that default connection is. Now, like I said, because we're using MS SQL Server, it's a pretty simple, but at the same time, very specific string. So we're going to type in server with a capital S, and then equals parentheses, and say local DB, okay? Close that parentheses, backslash, backslash, twice, MS SQL L O C A L D B. So M S SQL local D B. Okay. And then semicolon. And then we're going to say database. Database. Make sure you spell this correctly because if you spell it incorrectly, everything's going to go haywire on you and you're not going to know what the heck is going on. Then here we're going to say the name of the database. In this case, we'll call it home furnishings. Okay, furnish ings. And whatever this name is, it can be anything you want, but that is going to be the name of your database that you'll be looking for in the SQL Server Object Explorer, which we'll go over probably in the next video. Then we're going to finish that off with a semicolon, then trusted underscore connection equals true with a capital T, and then semicolon, and then multiple active result result sets, and then that can be equal to true as well. And then that's it. There is my database connection. And then finally, to finish it off, we're going to put a comma right there. And that's it. There is our connection string done. All right. And so that connection string will allow us to connect to Microsoft SQL Server which will be hosted here on our computer. You don't actually, you don't actually need to have a Microsoft SQL Server uh, if you don't want to on your computer, but you can. So I have SQL Server Management Studio, um, but you don't need that. I mean, it's helpful, but it's not necessary. Uh, you can actually explore Microsoft SQL Server right here in Visual Studio as you are developing. It's really simple, and I'll show you how to do that with the Object Explorer uh, in the next video once we get this database connected. But we can't really connect anything just yet, or we don't want to, simply because we don't have anything to build the database with, like as in data to put into it. So we will work on that next video. But thanks for sticking around, and hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and I will put this into the description. So in case you missed it or in case you can't see it very well, uh, it'll be there so that you can just do a super quick copy and paste. And that's it. So I will see you in the next video when we actually build our database with some entities and start filling it with some information, or at least start filling it with information uh, and like build up the database and all that. I just said that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing a whole bunch of that stuff in the next video and the video after that. So all right, until then, uh, I will see you in the next video and have some fun with this application. Well, I mean, I guess you, I mean, you can do whatever you want with it, but uh, you know, think about maybe what you want to do with it. I really have no clue where it's going to go, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of building this to help people out and give them an example of how all this stuff works. So uh, with that being said, I will see you later and uh, have an awesome day, week, month, whatever it is that you're having, and peace.